I'm so glad everyone is so happy to live in Columbus. I really couldn't think of a better place to work. Look at all these happy families. Even the pets are happy. Hmm. This looks interesting. A game about Columbus. has been working on a scheme to make Columbus look like a rotten place to live. Once they see what I've done, nobody will want to visit Columbus. <laughs> He's done this to other cities. He creates a game to wreck the city's reputation, and he distributes it over the Internet. How do you know all this? I used to be one of his lackeys. But I saw the error in my ways, and now I don't want to spend all of my time making other people feel bad. What I really want to do is be a gardener. But for now, I'm helping to undo the havoc that Laser Hater is creating. Well, that's good and all, but how do we stop Laser Hater? The only way to stop him is to beat him at his own game. His Columbus game? No, even better. We have to make a game of our own. One that shows what a creative and innovative place Columbus really is. That's a great idea. Now, who do we know that can help us? Hmm. I've got it. Columbus City School 5th graders. Can you help me create a game? It doesn't need to be a video game. Even a board game can defeat Laser Hater. It just has to be a great game. There are a few important elements to great games. Every game needs a goal. Something like, uh... Reaching a destination, scoring the most points, or building the biggest, best thing. <laughs> but really, the sky is the limit. The goal can be whatever your team decides the players are trying to accomplish. It also needs obstacles, something that makes it a challenge for the players to reach the goal. Like setbacks along the path, other characters that try to stop the player from reaching the goal, or ways for the other players to hinder their opponents. And it definitely needs rules, guidelines if you will, that all the players agree to follow as they pursue the goal and overcome the obstacles. You simply can't play a game without rules. Excellent, excellent. This is all coming together nicely. Since we want this game to show off how great Columbus is, let's all use something that makes Columbus great. What do you think would work? I've got it! Since Columbus has a National Medal Winning Art Museum here, why don't we use some artwork from the museum to help us generate ideas for our games? But who should we ask to help us pick the paintings? Nanette! The museum director is just the right person for the job. Mayor Coleman, I know four paintings that fit the bill. Marston Hartley's Berlin Antiwar, Candy Wiley's Portrait, Honoré Scherer's Nursery Rhyme, and Charles Birchfield's October. All of these paintings have characters, scenery, colors, and objects that will help you create great games that will make Columbus proud. Now, fifth graders. I want you to look closely at these paintings and think of ways that they could be used for your game. What kind of people, animals, or other characters do you see in these paintings? 
What do you imagine their personalities to be like? Where are they going? What do they want? Look at where they are. What stories could take place in these settings? Let your imagination run wild and think of as many ideas as you can. Once you have those ideas, discuss them with your group, change them up, and push them further. Then decide as a group what the setting and characters should be for your game. Work together to decide what the goal, obstacles, rules, and characters for your game should be. Good luck! Only the most creative game designers have any hope of challenging Laser Hater. <laughs>